Dekat video. Rekod. Rekod. This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, class. Um, uh, we are going to go through this course, uh, which is uh, KUC one one two, fundamentals of fundamentals of computing. Uh, uh, my, the lecturer's name is uh, Mr. Peter Wawira Barasa. Good morning, class. Um, we are going to go through this course. So we are going to go through this course that is KUC 112 Fundamentals of Computing. Of course, my lecturer's, lecturer's name is Peter Ouida Barasa, HCIA certified, artificial intelligence certified the, the practitioner. Uh, Barasa has a BSc and MS in computer science. And my emails, my email is pbarasa at kibu.ac.ke. The credit units for this particular course is three credit units. And uh, the purpose of this course, the course introduces the learner to the computer as an electronic device uh, and helps uh, the learner to be familiar with the, the computer as a system besides equipping them with computer literacy skills. literacy skills. So the expected learning outcomes, by the end of this course, the learner should be able to one, explain the characteristics and the purpose of all the computer subunits, categorize the different types of computers, explain the application of uh, computers to different fields, and explain the impacts of computers to the society, discuss the basic computer organization, explain the num number system, perform binary arithmetics, and the conversion to different bases. Number six, you'll demonstrate the use of network and data communication facilities. So the course content for this particular course, this is how it is arranged. And uh, you will find it on the LMS when you log into the LMS uh, system. Uh, you will find uh, the, the content well arranged and it's in a weekly basis. So get time, log into your LMS and be able to, to learn more uh, about this course. And at the end of this course also, you'll get uh, recorded uh, lecture notes uh, that will be a link on your LMS so that uh, if you missed uh, the course out, then you can, uh, you can listen to it later. So the entire KUC 112 course will cover the areas of characteristics of computers, the evolution, survey of computer technologies and application, introduction to hardware, basic computer organization, data representation, processor and memory, peripheral devices, introduction to computer to software, programming language, languages, operating systems, and application software. Introduction to data communication will also be looked at. So we will explore these areas using the, the, uh, using the topics below. So topic one will be introduction to computer. And under this topic one, you will get subsections. The first subsection is introduction to computers. Then the second section, uh, we, which we are going to look at is the definition of terms. Like what is a computer? Yeah, you need to know the definition of what a computer is. Then the third section, is evolution of computers, how computers have evolved. And uh, you will realize that computers have evolved from the first generation to the fifth generation computers. 
Then section four is classification of computers. Yeah, you can classify computers into various ways, at least three ways, according to size, according to functionality, and according to purpose. So we also look at that, that section. Then section five, we are going to look at uh, characteristics of computers. So it is also important to know the characteristics of a computer. Computers have their own characteristics, and it will be very handy in this lecture to look at it. Then we have section six, we are going to look at application of computers. So, and actually today we will be able to look at this topic one and uh, be able to see uh, how we introduce ourselves into this issue of computers. Section two, uh, as, as of course Lauter, we have the, the basic computer hardware. So here in the basic computer hardware, we will look at section one, the basic computer organization, input and output, I-O means the input and output, the processor, the memory, and the biases. So it will be the second topic. Then section two of this second topic will be introduction to computer hardware. Section three will look at input devices and criteria for selection. Section four will look at output devices. Section five, processing devices, CPU functions, and components. Section six, primary memory and types. Section seven, we'll look at uh, secondary memory. Uh, section eight, we look at storage devices. And section seven, we look at advantages and disadvantages of computers. So this will, will act as our second topic and we'll have several sections, subsections that uh, of course we are going to look at. Then topic three, we are going to look at basic computer software. So here we are going to look at introduction to computer software. Section two, software systems, operating systems, operating systems, utility software, and uh, driver. That's section two of topic three. Then section three, application software, word processor, databases, spreadsheets, and presentation is another area of that is section three. So in this particular topic, we are going to have uh, uh, three sections. Uh, we have going to have four sections. Uh, that is uh, introduction to computer software, computer systems, operating systems, utility software, and device drivers, application software, word processor, database, spreadsheet, and presentation. And section four is programming languages. So in this particular section, we have, in this particular topic, we have four sections. Then section four, we are going to look at uh, data processing modes. And here we have two sections, uh, namely section one is introduction to data processing, section two, data processing modes. Then section five, we are going to look at uh, data, uh, no, topic five, we are going to look at uh, data communication and networks, and it has the following four sections, that is introduction to data communication, which is section one, section two, lab data communication elements, section three, introduction to networks, section four, types of networks and network topologies. So that is, will be very key. Section six, we are going to look at uh, data representation. Uh, and uh, that, no, not section six, that's topic six. We are going to look at data representation and uh, section one is introduction to data representation. Section two of six is binary. You look at binary code, this is where we'll do the calculations. We look at the binary, the octal, the decimal, the hexadecimal number systems. And section three, we look at the ASCII, BCD, e, EBCD, and the Unicode. So I'm sorry I didn't share the screen, but uh, I, I hope you can see this, uh, the sections and uh, the sections we have been talking about. Um, so section six, we talk about data representation. 
which is introduction to data representation, binary, binary, octal, decimal, hexadecimal number system. And section three, we have the ASCII. These are the unique code. Then we have the EBCDI and the Unicode, which we are going to look at. Then the modes of delivery here, we we'll have lectures, directed notes, practicals, uh, a bit of hands on uh, sessions and uh, projects. Then, so the instructional material and equipment, you just need audio visual equipment, writing boards, uh, computer simulation software and computer programming tools. Then the assessment, we are going to have two cuts uh, and note the following that uh, examination examination takes 70 percent so you need to know that uh, when, at the end of this semester you are going to have an exam which will take will be marked uh, out of 70. then we have the continuous assessment test which is going to take 30 30 percent and note that we are going to have online cuts so make sure that uh, you will be prepared to have online cuts. Also note that in the LMS system, at the end of every, at the end of every section, we have a continuous assessment test at the end of every section. So make sure that you attempt all the sections online and uh, you, you'll be familiar on how to do exams. So when you go to the assessment section in your LMS, in every week, you will get some questions at the end of every topic, attempt them, and that will also form part of the assignments that uh, uh, will lead to a word of marks in the continuous assessment. So continuous assessment is that we'll have two cuts which are online, not, 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 not very carefully that. Then we have our core reading books, fundamentals of computing, and the introduction to computers. So these are the key the key elements that we're going to look at in this particular course. So it's good when you go to the LMS system, you will get, you will get the course outline. In the first section of the LMS, we have the course outline. So under resources, you can download the course outline and uh, use it uh, to, to prepare for, for the next topics that uh, will be delivered. And as I said, there are only six. I think I went through these without, uh, without showing you on the screen, but now I think from here you can see from your screen, the sections are very clear and the topics, and that is it. So let's quickly dive into, into, into the notes. Let's quickly dive into the notes. Yeah, let's quickly dive into the notes. So today, first years, we are privileged as your lecturer in this course to take you through this topic one. And the topic one is introduction to computers. I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, and uh, I hope you can see it very clearly. Yeah, you can see my screen. So introduction to computers is our first topic and um, this topic of course introduces you to the computer here you get to define what a computer is it also introduces you to history of the evol uh, of the evolution of the computer as a machine after which you will be walked through the details of the classification of computers their uses as well as advantages and disadvantages the topic has been, has seven section namely because we already said at the, in the course outline very clearly that we are going to handle certain sections. So for this particular section, uh, we are going to have introduction to computers, definition of terms, evolution of computers, classification of computers, characteristics of computers, application of computers, advantages and disadvantages of computers. So this is, uh, these are the main things that we are going to look at in this particular topic. So, our first object, so the objective of this particular topic, by the end of this topic, the learner should be able to, one, define a computer, should be able to define a computer, explain the evolution of computing technology and the technology advancement in computer architecture to current technologies, explain the characteristics of computers and how they are different from humans, explain the different types of computers categorized based on size 
price and capabilities. So these are the key things at the end of this topic, you must note and note very carefully that you, at the end of this topic, you must uh, have known how to define what a computer is. You must know that there are different generations of, of, of computers that they have been evolving in different generations. And of course, you're just going to look at the five generations. Then what are the characteristics of a computer? The capabilities of a computer. Once you know the capabilities of a computer, then you will know why it's important to use the computer, of course. Then you have to, again, in a nutshell, understand that computers are classified according to size, price, capability. So it's very important for you to know that. So uh, on this particular part, you will get activities. And some of these activities, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them on the LMS uh, under some section, under sections called forums. So some of these, when you go to the forums, we'll get some of these questions. I'll add them on the LMS so that you can be able to answer these questions as activities. You can be able to interact with each other on the forums. Uh, so I'll add some of these questions on the forum. So like what comes to your mind as a learner when you hear of the mention of the word computer? So for these particular questions, I'll put them in forum so that you can react over. But uh, I'll move just to the topic itself. So in this topic, you will notice that there the are varied uh, definition of a computer. However, this topic is designed to help you understand what a computer is and its application in real life. We will then move to discuss the sections in this topic. So welcome, so welcome, very welcome to this course. So introduction to computers. Everywhere you go today, we realize that humans are employing the use of machines in their daily lives to an extent that today, someone can wash, cook, do research, and entertain using machines. This means that uh, the human race is embracing the use of machines without being threatened at all, which implies that the machine, which was earlier considered a threat, has now become a necessary evil. So this machine, this machine that is closely replacing the human is called a computer. In the next section, we'll get to define what a computer is so as to bring out its understanding and why we need it. So what comes into your mind when you, you talk about a computer? What comes into your mind? What comes into your mind is that, uh, of course, a computer is an electronic device. When, 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 when you ask most people, they say it's an electronic device. Then there are certain things when you are defining a computer, you must not miss out your definition. You must not miss something to do with the processing. You must not miss out something to do with the input. You must not miss something to do with output, because that is very key. Any computer that receives data, it will process that data, and it will give you an output. Even the smartphones you are having, they are also just computers. So a computer is defined as an electronic device. So that is very key. Just not the word, it's an electronic device. So it's an electronic device. So that's the first thing you have to note and underline. So it being an electronic device, it receives data. So it receives data as input, of course. So every computer, which is an electronic device, receives data. So it receives data through, of course, input, stores it, processes it, and produces information with a high degree of accuracy, speed, and a set of instructions. So from this, you can see that a computer will receive data, will be able to store, will be able to will be able to process that data and will be able to produce. When you talk about production, we are talking about output. When we talk about processing, it's just actually changing the data into information so that it can be displayed. Then there's storage, which is a key component. So just like your phone, you can store your pictures, you can store a lot of information. So that one turns it into a, smart, a smartphone, which is, of course, a computer. So looking at that, and another thing is uh, you look at uh, the input. So it receives data through input. And we are going to, when we look at the hardware, we are going to look at uh, the input devices, the output devices, and even the processing devices. So you, you, you will know what all these are in the next topics that we're going to, to look at. So it can perform activities that involve mathematics, logic, and graphic manipulation. 
Generally, the term is used to describe a collection of devices that function together as a computer system. So a computer, a computer is thus a general purpose machine that processes data according to a set of instructions. The set of instructions is called a program. When most people talk about computers today, they are referring to electronic digital computers, such as personal computers, laptop, handheld computers, or large business computers. So the term digital means that it uses computation based on, on binary digit. Binary is a, a number notation system that uses the numbers zero and one in various combinations. So electronic circuits use on or off electrical conditions to represent binary numbers one or zero internally within a computer. So electronic digital computers process digital information such as fantastic, at, at fantastic speeds. Many of today's computers, even desktop computers, have internal processing speeds of two gigahertz or more. Now, when we look at computer speeds, just look at the speed. The speed of a computer determines how fast the computer is, of course, in gigahertz. Just like your phone, when you're going to buy your phone, you look at certain features. One of the features you always look at is the speed of that particular phone. So even the computers have speed. So your phone, your smartphone also has the speed of that particular processor. And that is why when you're going to buy a phone, you look at all those, uh, all, all those uh, features. Then you decide that I want an 8 GB, 8 gigahertz uh, processor or 4 gigahertz. That's why you, you look at one phone is better than the other. So compared with the Univac 1, 1951, this was developed in 1951, speed of less than uh, three megahertz. These are fantastic uh, advancement in technology. So we have moved all the way from two megahertz, which is actually, you can't be patient in the current generation to use two megahertz. But those, the, the, our, our, our mentors in this computing world use those ones so they can they develop better processing machine and as we talk right now in the world i think china is much ahead through huawei is developing very high processing machines that can even do parallel computing so if you look at this that that, that is a fantastic advancement uh, that we are moving in less than 40 years so the drastic development in computing industry has made it to be known as the dynamic industry so almost all computers today are electronic digital computers. In fact, there are over 500 million electronic digital computers. However, not all computers are digital and neither are all, com com neither are all computers are electronic. So a computer therefore is an electronic device that can perform activities that involve mathematics, logic and graphic manipulation. Uh, so generally the term is used to develop a collection of devices that function together as a system, it performs the following three, op three operations in a sequence. So these operations are one, it receives data and instruction from the input device. Two, it processes the data as per instructions. Three, it provides the results output in a desired form, which is very important. So the devices that are used to provide the input to the computer are called input devices. So anything that brings input into the computer is an input device. So the part of the computer that performs the processing is called the central processing unit, the CPU. When we are handling the hardware, we are going to look at this section very thoroughly so that we can dissect it into all those components that are under the CPU. So why the devices that display the results of the CPU are called output devices. So when we are looking at the components of the hardware, you will notice we have what we call output devices. We are going to look at, uh, of course, input and, and of course the processing. Now let's understand the definition of other terms also used together with the computer. And for this, we are going to look at three key issues. 
what is data, what is information, and what's a program. So it's very important that uh, we look at this area. Just a minute. Kindly assist me with the charger. Better is going low. Give me a charger. Just a minute. I'm online. Let's just move the. Okay, so sorry for that. I think uh, we had an issue of internet, but uh, we just resolved it, so we are okay. So I'm back, and uh, we had already looked at, uh, we had uh, delved into the definition of a computer. So we are going into the three definitions that are shared with a computer. Uh, the three definitions are uh, data, information, and programs. So these are the key things we are going to look at this moment. Uh, so data, what is data? Data is a collection of raw facts, figures, and symbols. Data can be defined as a representation of facts, concepts, or instructions in a formalized manner, which should be suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing by human or electronic machine. So data is represented with the help of char characters like alphabet A to Z, the small uh, uppercase or lowercase, the digit zero to nine, and the special characters, plus, minus, um, less than, greater than, and equals. So names of students and their marks in different subjects list in a random order. So that's what we call that. So the raw facts is what we call data. But what is information? It's very important to know what information is. And information is processed data. We need to know that it's organized and it's presented in a, in a manner that is very organized. So that is data. The other thing you have to look at is uh, uh, under data, for decisions to be meaningful, the process data must qualify the following characteristics. The, da the information must be timely. Information should be available when required. They should, there is need for accuracy. Information should be accurate because if you are working in the bank and a zero will mean 10 million or could mean 100 million. Just add a zero. So 10,000, if you add a zero, that becomes 100,000. So it's important to note that uh, accuracy is a key, is key. Then we have completeness. Information should be, information uh, should be complete. Then program set, set of, instru uh, set of instructions that enable a computer to perform a given task. So data processing is the restructuring or reordering of data by people or machines to increase their usefulness, add values for particular purpose. Since data processing is a process, it is nice to understand what the process entails. Therefore, data processing consists of the basic steps, input, processing, output, and storage. The four steps that uh, constitute the data processing cycle are follows. So it is important for you to look at the four steps that enable us to have the data processing cycle. The first one is what we call the input. In this step, the inputs are prepared in some convenient form for processing. So there's a way that you have to capture input. So that, uh, like in your phone, you have a way, you have um, uh, a keyboard, a virtual keyboard that you use to type in numbers. So that's the way you use, you use a virtual keyboard. But uh, in the computers, we have the keyboards. You can see them and touch them. But mostly in your phones, you use what you call virtual keyboards. That uh, just online, when you press a given letter, it works. So the form will depend on the processing machine. For example, when electronic computers are used, the input data could be reco recorded on any of several types of input medias, 
such as magnetic uh, disk steps and so on. Then processing. In this step, input data are changed to produce data in a more useful form. For example, paychecks may be calculated from the time cards or a summary of sales for the month may be calculated from the sales order. Then we have the output. Output is also very key in the cycle. Here, the results of the, process, uh, pro, of the proceeding uh, processing step are collected, collect, collected. The particular form of the output data depends on the use of the data. For example, output data may be paychecks for the employees. The other key part of the cycle is the storage. In this step, the output is uh, preserved for future reference and could be retrieved for the same. So these are the key important issues you have to highlight and look at when you're looking at the data processing cycle. And it's as, as shown. Then the other sec in this particular section now, the next section, we are going to look at what we call the evolution of computers. Computers have evolved, just like in history, uh, evolution. Man has also evolved. Just like in history, man has evolved. Now we are going to look at how computers have evolved. And uh, most of you have gone through history classes. I know you, you a lot of history on uh, industry. What we are having is that kindly don't share your screen. Because when you share your screen, we are having issues. Kindly don't share your screen. Because when you share your screen, you interfere with me uh, sharing the notes. So kindly don't share your screen. Let me be the only one sharing the screen. And you can be able to see what is happening. So we had reached at a point where we are looking at Abacus, uh, 500 BC. And um, just a recap, we can say that uh, the Abacus is one of the earliest known computational devices and can be traced to the ancient Babylon. Uh, although Abacus is over 2,000 years, it remains useful today in certain businesses and elementary schools where students are learning arithmetic. So the Abacus is the most ancient calculating device known. It has endured over time and is still in use in some countries. So an abacus consists of a wooden frame, rods, and beads. So each rod represents a different place value, zeros, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. Each bead uh, represents a number, usually one or five, and can be moved along the rods. Additionally, Ah, no, sorry, addition subtract, and, subtract, and subtraction can easily be performed by moving beads along the wires of Abacus. So if you want to find out more about Abacus, just go to Google and uh, you will read and even how it operates. You can also Google from uh, YouTube and see further how, if you want to see how it operates, you can just go and type Abacus uh, and the way it operates and you can see a YouTube the, in the YouTube, there are so many videos on that. Um, so that's the abacus, and it was used, and it's among the earliest. Then come in, 19, in 1642, the mechanical calculator. Um, uh, of course, it is nice to note that each time technology becomes obsolete, there is advancement. So from the abacus, an improvement was discovered. That's the mechanical calculator. In uh, 1642, the Frenchman, Blaise Pascal, invented a mechanical device that functioned as an adding machine, known as the machine arithmetic crew. The device was constructed of interlocking gears that uh, represented the number zero through nine. It operates like an odom odometer, which records an automobile's mileage. About 30 years later, Gottfried von Leibniz, a German mathematician, improved on Pascal's invention by producing a machine which could add, subtract, multiply, divide, and extract fruits. So however, no one knew how the manufacture, how to, however, sorry, however, no one knew how to manufacture such uh, precision machines. A mechanical calculator or a calculating machine was a mechanical device used in performing autom automatically the basic operations of arithmetic. Most mechanical calculators were comparable in, uh, in size to small desktop computers and have been rendered obsolete by the advent of the electronic calculator. If you look at the electronic calculator and the current and the old ones, 
actually these are better. So this is the old machine we are talking about. You can see uh, the photo very clearly is a mechanical calculator. Jack quads automated uh, loom, jack quads uh, automated loom of 1801. Uh, next in line was uh, this one that uh, we're talking about Joseph Marie Jacquot, who perfected the automated loom. The loom was controlled by a chain of cards, a number of uh, punched cards left into a continuous sequence. So multiple rows of holes were punched on each card with one complete card corresponding to one row of the design. So using holes uh, punched into the series of connected cards, he was able to control the weaving of fabrics. So it, this one actually was used in weaving of fabrics. So the loom used in this process sends the pattern coded into the cards and wove the fabric automatically. So this is one of the earliest machine, of course, in 1801, that's 1801. Uh, and um, it was used for weaving, automated weaving of a fabric. If you have a design, you punch it, uh, where the hole is, uh, where it's punched and where it's not punched, it was in terms of zeros and ones. Mm. So then we, are, we move to the next one, which is the uh, uh, differential engine of the 1800s. But it will shock you to discover that the English inventor Charles Babbage, uh, Lukashan, professor of mathematics at Cambridge University in the England, proposed a machine which was later named the analytic machine, the, 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 sorry, the, the analytic engine. For this discovery, Babbage is referred to as the father of computers. However, despite 10 years work, Babbage fails to build a fully operational model as it was incredibly complex machine that was 100 years ahead of his time. Not until 1854 did uh, George Persguz uh, build a, a working model. So this is uh, the, the analytic machine. Then we look at what the, the, the electronic punch card equipment of 1880. Sometimes after the above discovery, the US Census Bureau asked Herman Hollery to find a way to speed up the processing of census, census data. Hollerith created punch cards that resemble today's computer cards, their code and tabulating equipment. So the 1890 census was completed in approximately three years rather than 11 years uh, the census uh, bureau had originally estimated. So a punch card or the, or the Hollerith card is a piece of stiff paper that, that contained each command for controlling automated machine, machinery or data for data processing application. Both commands and the data were, uh, were represented by the presence or absence of holes in the predefined decision. And you can see, this is what we are saying. It is here, and uh, you can see that. So we'll quickly look, we go to the, the next section, which is computer generation. So. We have looked at uh, having seen the earlier innovations of computers, it is good to explore computer generation. So the, the computer generation refer to electronic era durations where computers started using electronic devices. And of essence, when we are looking at this particular uh, uh, generation, not the following. Make sure that you note the following. The generation itself, the name of the generation, if it's the first generation, not the, the then not the year of evolution. It's very key. Anything that is evolving has a year and an end. So not the year of evolution. Kindly also not the characteristics of that or the features of that particular uh, of that particular generation. Uh, once you look at that, it's also important to look at what are the merits and the demerits of that particular generation. And finally, you look at the examples of those computers that exist. So for you to, to be able to explain a full generation, the key things are, as I repeat again, look at the the generation, the name of the generation, the year of evolution, the characteristics or the features of that particular generation. Then you have the merits and demerits. So you look at that, uh, you will be able, then lastly, you look at the examples. So once you look at that, then you will be fit to understand uh, a particular generation. 
So like today, we are looking at the first generation computers. Uh, this one came into play in 1946 to 1956. That's a 10 year period. The computer technology mushroomed in the early 1950s. In 1951, the UNIVAC, which is the universal auto automatic computer was introduced. Uh, these computers were constructed of vacuum tubes. So the other thing also I didn't mention is you look at the technology. Like for this one, we are talking about, they were constructed using vacuum tubes. So vacuum tubes is a technology that you need to know that they used vacuum tubes were big. So the word is also the, the vacuum tubes were used and they were very big and bulky. And the other thing you note that they generated a lot of heat. So on storage, it also keen, it's, when you look at technology, it's also keen to look at the magnetic, uh, magnet, uh, the, the storage, the storage system. And in this particular one, the magnetic drums were used for internal storage, were used for internal storage. Why useful in terms of kindly stop sharing your screen so that I'm not interfered with? Eh? I said once you interfere with the screen, when I'm moving, I, I thought the screen was on, but some of you are trying to share the screen. Kindly stop sharing your screen so that I'm the only one sharing. So me memory was limited. The, the other thing you have to note in this particular that uh, we have the magnetic drums that were used for internal storage. And then the memory was limited to as little as 2K system. I don't know how many will be patient with that 2K, 2 kilo uh, system, uh, kilobytes. This is a very uh, system that can hardly store even uh, anything. But people had to endure in 1946 to 1956 to use a 2K kilowatt system. Uh, so, uh, kilobyte system. So, at times, unreliable, uh, at times unreliable because of the problem created by the heat. And sorry, sorry, uh, uh, and uh, many maintainers problems. So punched cards were used to input information. So the other thing you have to look at what was used to input information in this particular generation, punched cards, and that's why it is highlighted so that you can really know that the input device here was the punched cards. The operating system had very little capability. So look, it had an operating system, but very little capabilities. Then the operating systems, like for example, now if it had very little capability, like for example, you have your operating system on your phone, we have Android operating system. I know we are going to look at operating systems later, but it's important to know, like for example, an operating system could be your Android. Those there are those who are using Windows, if you are using a Nokia phone, there are those who are using the, the Apple. So. Uh, there are so many operating systems uh, the, the, on different devices. So machine language and low-level assemblers were used in programming these computers. The major users were government, universities, and major corporations for financial and statistical programs run in a batch processing. So the main features of first generation are the following. So that's what I would say. It's, it's of keen interest, you as a student, to know that this generation had the following features or characteristics. So vacuum technology operating system uh, were very slow. So we have the vacuum uh, tube technology. Then operating systems were very slow. They were unreliable, supported machine language only. So they supported machine language in terms of zeros and ones. So when you talk about a machine language, you're just talking about zeros and ones. So it only supported the machine language. So you can imagine if things are just written zeros and ones in a whole page, understanding was also a problem. Then very costly, generate a lot of heat, slow input and output device, a huge size, uh, need, uh, need of, there was also need of air conditioning because now they generate a lot of heat. Then they were non-portable. You could not move them from one point to another. Then consumed a lot of heat, a uh, lot of uh, electricity. So that's a, an area you have to look at. So for example, examples of this particular, we have the ENIAC, then we have EDVAC, Univac and IBM uh, 700, 701, IBM 650. So this, this is the first generation. You can look at it and you can see a photo there to help you. So the first generation computer had their own disadvantages and this led to the advancement to the second generation. And as you can see, of course, their disadvantages are very clear here. The only advantage we have with this one is only understood machine language. So it will just process, it will process directly. There was no conversion, things were just easy. The only thing that it understood machine language, so there were no conversions, just direct. But uh, most of these unreliable, very costly, a lot of heat, all those things 
and uh, has low storage memory. All those things are what we call demerit. So that's why I told you that in every particular uh, generation, you have to look at that. So, uh, so these demerits led to the second generation. And in 1957 to 1963, uh, the second generation evolved. The computers were made smaller, faster, and easier to program, produced lesser heat, and had greater operating capacity. They were constructed using transistors instead of vacuum tubes. So note, these ones use transistors. They never used vacuum tubes. Then magnetic core instead of uh, drum memory were used, which make the memory larger up to eight to 20 kilobytes or larger. So you can look at the storage capacity was a bit higher compared to the, to the latter. Then the magnetic tape systems were developed and, and uh, marketed. Single job, process, uh, single job batch processing was used by most systems. Some systems permitted multiple users to access the system concurrently. That is what we call the time sharing. So Fortran and COBOL languages, which are high level languages uh, and, uh, and uh, report program generators were available in these, in some systems. So you can see we have introduced new programming languages called like COBOL and we have Fortran. This, these languages were very important in this particular in this particular generation. So the main features of this second generation is that they use transistors. So it's 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 a takeaway home that you need to know that this particular one used uh, transistors and first generations used vacuum tubes. So you have to know that you note that then reliable as compared to the first one. So you look at the other ones were very unreliable, but this one became reliable. Small size as compared to the first generation computers. Generate less heat as compared to the first generation computers, consumed less, uh, less electricity as compared to the first generation computers, faster than uh, the first generation computers, still very costly, they were very costly, and the SE was needed. So, of course, that was needed, uh, electricity, of course, was needed there. Then, uh, support machines and assembly languages, some, comp some computers of this generation were the following. So, these were the computers of this. These are the examples of the computers that existed. That uh, IBM had uh, uh, 1620, IBM had 7094, CDC 1604, CDC 3600, Univac 1108. So these are the examples. Now, what are the merits? What are the demerits? Um, uh, it's something that, uh, you, as, as I said, you have to look at. And some of the uh, merits of this is that at least you can see from these features the merits but the demerits that's also it's still it's it produced it also produced heat but less compared to the other one but it also it was still generating a lot of heat uh, in this particular one so you look at that part so that's the computer then this technology in the second generation did not hold for long as it did not take long time before it was upgraded to what was referred to as a third generation computer so the third generation computer came into evolution, and uh, this third generation came into evolution in 1965 to 1974. These computers were constructed of uh, micro miniaturized integrated circuits, what we call the ICs, uh, instead of the transistors. So not the technology changed from transistors. We started with first, if you go back, we started with vacuum tubes. We have come to the transistor technology. Now we're moving into what we call the ICs, what we call the integrated circuits. So solid state uh, as well as magnetic core memories were used. Uh, this increased the memory to in, a, in excess uh, of uh, megabytes. So you can imagine we were doing eight to 20. The other one we are doing two. The, the first generation we are doing two. Uh, the second generation we are doing eight to 20 kilobytes. Now we are going into megabytes. So you can imagine the storage capacity became much more better. So magnetic uh, disks were most, uh, more widely used than the magnetic tapes for random access, online processing of, uh, of files. So multiple programs were executed concurrently. So in this particular one, we have uh, multiple programs that are being executed. That's what we call multi-programming. Uh, multi batch and online, batch and online time sharing uh, application run concurrently. Some computers had more than some computers had more than one C 
CPU proce processing, that is multi-processing. So the main features of uh, that generation uh, computers is IC was used. So IC is the integrated circuits. Then they were more reliable. If you compare to the first and second generation, these ones were more reliable. Then they were a bit smaller. They generated less heat. So they generated less heat. They still generated heat, but not less compared to the first and second generation. Then lesser maintenance. They require lesser maintenance compared to the first and second generation. And they were still costly. And uh, air condition needed uh, consumed less electricity uh, support. And the high level programming languages, of course, were also used. Some computers of these generations were the IBM 360 series. We have the Honeywell 6000 uh, series. Then we have the PDP or personal digital processor. The IBM 370 slash 168. And we have the TDC 360. Very important for you to look at that. So with the time, these machines were phased out and uh, replaced with the fourth generation computers. So in the fourth generation computers, we have uh, from 1979 to 1989. These computers are, are cons constructed of large scale integrated circuits. They were similar, uh, they have similar abilities to that generation computers, except they have more internal memory of, of several megabytes. So microcomputers became to be known as uh, personal computers, operating system, uh, is complex but user friendly. So these are more user friendly. If you compare to the initial initial one, they just used understood machine language, the first generation, zeros and ones. But for this particular one, it, it was user friendly because the, the programming languages and the operating system that was being used, of course, people were able to use them and read in the English statement. So it was easy, so it became more user friendly. So more time sharing than single user systems have excellent support for database. In this generation, time sharing, real-time networks, distributed operating systems were used. All the high-level languages like C and C++, DBase, ETC were used in this generation. So the main features of uh, the fourth generation are the very large-scale integration technology. So the VLSI, very large-scale integration technology, was used, very large-scale integration so here is where integration was used and here the ic's were so that so many ic's put on on, on one system so that it comes up a high processing uh, unit so those processors were the vl vlsi very cheap portable and reliable use of pieces uh, very small size pipeline processing no air conditioning needed concept of internet was introduced. So the concept of internet came into this generation. That is the fourth generation computers. Then great development in the field of uh, networks. Computers became easily available. And some of the computers of this generation were the DEC 10, the Star 1000, the PDP 11, the Cray 1 uh, supercomputers, the Cray XMP supercomputer. So those were very key things that so the major thrust of the fifth generation computer is the dawn of the distributed computing system and the merging of telecommunication with computing technology. So that is one of the main things. And then now we are going to the fifth generation. These are computers being developed. They are the, tr uh, the true artificial intelligent computers. The, the computers employed is ultra high ICs, integrated circuits, voice recognition, voice recognition, expert system, and internet-based systems. In the fifth generation, the VLSI technology became ultra large scale integration. So here now we are talking about the ultra, from the VLSI, now we are talking about the ultra large scale integration technology, resulting in the production of microprocessor chips, having 10 million electronic components, AI is an emerging branch in computer science which interprets mean and methods of making computers think like human beings. So in this, in this particular one, because of the ultra large scale integration, we are able to develop, uh, we are able to develop machines that can mimic uh, the working of the human, the human brain and just work like a human being. 
So, but they cannot be as perfect. We still need the human beings to instruct them. So all the high level languages like C, C++, Java, all the programming languages are used in this generation. So in AI, this artificial intelligence, and this is the next frontier in academia where we, in terms of computing, it's artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is key because of robotics, neural networks, neural networks, uh, game playing, development of expert system to make decisions in real life situation, natural language processing, understanding, and generation. So for the, the main features, as, I, as, as we had earlier alluded, is that you have to look at, again, the features. And here we have the ULSI, which is the ultra large scale integration technology, development of true artificial intelligence, development of natural language processing, advancement in parallel computing, advancement in supercomputer technology, uh, more user-friendly interfaces with multimedia features, availability of very powerful and compact computers at, at, at cheaper rates. So looking at these, this is where your fifth generation is where also even your, your phones also fall in because we have the desktop computers, we have the laptops, we have the notebooks, we have the ultra, uh, ultra book, we have the Chromebook, and we also have your smartphones as part of the fifth generation. So research shows that uh, the trend in computer technology revolution is that there is the following, continual decrease in computer size. As you know, we have computers are decreasing in size. Your smartphone is, just a, is, is actually a computer because it can do most of the functionalities. So it's just a computer. Your smartphone is a computer. It's much smaller. Right now you're accessing all this internet, enjoying all these uh, services, courtesy of that small smart computer called the phone. And it has a higher processing uh, power compared even to the laptops and uh, depending on the phone you have, depending on what you have in the pocket. So you, it is noted that the computer continually decreases in size, then improved speed and processing, and uh, uh, speed and uh, power processing, then decrease in computers and the related facility costs. So you have to note that. Uh, the other thing is that I know at the end of every course, as you are in the LMS, not that we have questions, and uh, assessment. So I'll not dwell into the assessment, but uh, maybe I can, just, I can just answer for you the first question is, um, uh, for example, can you type now the answers into your LMA, your, your Zoom? Can you just type the answer? The second generation, what, uh, for example, the first question, the second generation computer used what? Did they use vacuum tubes, capacitors, transistors, or integrated circuits? Can you type into your, uh, your zoom so that we can see can you kindly type into the message if you can you have a zoom message you can type hmm? Hmm? yeah i can see i know some are already in the chat i can see you are you are you are typing in the answers and actually, most of you are actually have been following well. And I can see most of you are getting that actually it's the transistors. So that's very important. What about the third generation? Can you type? The third generation. You can also type. I can see. I hope on the chat you're already doing that. Um, OK. The third generation of computers used what? What did they use? Hmm? So I can see most of you, of course, uh, typing in. Good, 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 and uh, that is it. So we can move next. Let us. Uh, we we have a few minutes to to finish. So we, we let's let's walk to the next. Mm, so let me share my screen. So having known the various computer generations, let us now look at the types of computers available today and how do we classify them. So we want to know how to classify computers. And one of the objectives, of course, uh, as we began this topic, we were to look at the types of computers and, uh, and how they are classified. So here, it will be important to know the manufacturers of, uh, know that uh, manufacturers offer many shapes and sizes of computer systems. 
but the many models can be broadly classified using various classification criteria. Computers are classified according to the functionality, size, and, and power, and purpose. So classification according to functionality, for example, using type of data, um, handle, handle computers can be classified as analog computers. So in terms of functionality, we have two types. We have three types, sorry, we have three types. According, computers are classified according to functionality. We have three types, we have the analog computers, we have the analog, kindly stop sharing your screen. You're interfering with me. Kindly stop sharing your screen. Kindly stop sharing your screen because you're interfering with my presentation. Kindly stop sharing your screen. So according to me, they are classified, uh, computers can be classified according to functionality. And there are three ways in which they are classified. We have analog computers, digital computers, and hybrid computers. So in analog computers uh, is a computer in which numbers and values are represented by physical measurable quantities such as voltages. So this one is uh, physical measurable quantities such as voltages. And uh, they perform arithmetic and uh, analogical operations by measuring physical changes, i.e. temperature and pressure. It measures values of continuous variable quantities. It is common in scientific work. So these are very important. And uh, looking at that, of course, analog computers, um, look, uh, looking at uh, the analog computers, you can see that uh, uh, they are there. And then the next, we have what we call the digital computers. These are computers in which data is represented in a digital, num digital or number form. Here, the computers operate on digital data by performing arithmetic and logic operation on the data. They recognize data by counting discrete signals represent either on or off, zero or one. Digital computers can be divided into several, uh, in, into general, sorry. Digital computers can be divided into general and educated computers. So computers which combine features of analog and digital types are also called the hybrid. So we are now introduced to the hybrid. So where we have the crossbreed between analog and digital, here we have what we call the hybrid computers. So a hybrid is a crossbreed between two breeds. In computers, this is first to computers are designed to handle both discrete and analog. They are meant to match the strong points of analog, such as the simulation and digital computers, ease of changing from one program into another. So using the, now, what is the difference? Uh, so this is a question I leave to you. Once you get the notes, try to ask yourself the difference between analog and digital signals. What's the difference? Can you kindly draw digital signals? And can you kindly draw uh, analog signals? What's the difference? So kindly, this will be your work. So this one is your assignment. Just note that uh, you can do it on your own. Uh, you can either Google and get, uh, but okay, you go to the library, look at these and know what the difference between analog and digital as you read through the notes. So the next subsection carries the major group of components in use today. So here now we have the classification of computers according to size. And computers according to size, we have, um, we have supercomputers, we have mainframe computers, and we have mini computers, and we have microcomputers, we have notebook computers and desktop computers, laptop, palm top. These are key, key important computers that you have to look at. So the other thing again, as we highlighted in the generations, it's important for you to note the features of a particular, uh, it's important for you to look at the characteristics of a particular, of a particular computer according to size and the way they are classified according to size. So when you talk about a supercomputer, what are the features? As a student, you need to know what are the features of a supercomputer and how are they different from that of the main from computer? So it is very important for you to look at them. And uh, once you look at them, it will be very nice uh, for you to understand that we have come from far and now we are here. So supercomputers, uh, these have extremely large storage capacities and computing speeds, which are at least 10 times faster than other computers. These are used for large scale numerical problems in scientific and engineering disciplines, such as electronics, weather forecasting. So the first supercomputer was developed in the US by Gray 
computers. This computer is not used as a PC in a home, neither by a student in a college. Governments especially use this type of computer for their different calculation and heavy jobs. Different industries also use this huge computer for designing their products. In most of the Hollywood movies, it is used for automation, uh, used for animation. So mostly in, in a, I told you stop sharing. Shabra, kindly stop sharing your, George, stop sharing your screen. You are giving me hell here. So mostly, of course, I've said, uh, just a recap that in most of the Hollywood movies, it is used for animation purposes. So this kind of computer is also helpful for forecasting weather reports worldwide. They are known for von Neumann's design, i.e. multiple processor system with a parallel processing. Uh, parallel processing. In such a system, a task is broken down and shared among processes for faster execution. They are used for complex tasks requiring a lot of computational power. So not those particular features. Then we have the mainframe. A mainframe is another giant computer after the supercomputer and can also process millions of instructions per second and capable of accessing billions of data. They are, physical, they are physically very large in size with very high capacity of, of main memory. This computer is commonly used in big stores, airline reservation companies, and many other huge companies prefer mainframe because of its capability of retrieving data on a large basis. They can be linked to smaller computers and handle hundreds of users. Uh, hundreds of users, they are also used in space exploration. So they can be linked to smaller computers and handle hundreds of users. They are also used in sp uh, space exploration. The term mainframe was uh, mainly used for earliest computers as they were big in size. Though, though today the, the term is used to refer to large computers. So a large number of peripherals can be atta attached to them. They are expensive to install because they support a large number of terminals for use by a variety of users simultaneously. They are known to have large storage and high computing speed, but relatively lower than the supercomputers. What was prominent for these computers was the ability to be linked into a network. Then we have the mini computers. You can see what a mini computer is. Uh, the one, the one is, uh, this one is, um, this is sorry. Uh, this one is a medium sized computer with moderate cost and used for large volume application. It can serve multi users simultaneously. They are smaller than the mainframe, but bigger than mini computers. So they are smaller than the, the mainframe, but uh, uh, they are smaller than the, the mainframe, of course. Um, uh, the, these mini computers are smaller than uh, mainframe. So they support concurrent users. They can, they can be used as servers in companies. They are slower and less costly compared to mainframe computers but more powerful, reliable, and expensive than microcomputers. So a microcomputer is the smallest general purpose processing system. Microcomputers are referred to as personal computers. They are of advanced technologies. The micro era based on large scale integration that confine several physical components per small element thumb size, ICs. So they use the ICs, hence the size reduced. It is the smallest of the three computers. They are usually called personal computers since they are designed to be used by individuals. The microchip technology has enabled a reduction of size of computers. So microcomputers are, can be a desktop, laptop, notebook, or even palm top. So you can look at the notebooks, the desktop, the laptop, and the palm top, and including even your smartphone can also fall under this category. So next we move to what we call the personal, the personal computers. The personal computer, 
a personal computer has a monitor. That is what we call a personal computer has a monitor. What we call the video visual display unit, a keyboard, a disk drive, a printer, and a CPU. So the CPU is what we call the central processing unit. So CPU, the CPU, which is the central processing unit of a PC, a personal computer, has a motherboard with several chips mounted on the on the circuit board. The major components of the circuit board are microprocessor, RAM. Um, sorry, somebody tried to share, so he has interfered again. Kindly stop sharing so that uh, I'm the only one who is being gotten. So we are looking at the PC. And uh, here, uh, I can just re recap because of uh, the issues of the way you, you, you are trying to share, so it's interfering with mine. So let me just repeat on personal computers. So personal computers, a computer has a monitor, which is the VDU, visual display unit, a keyboard, a disk, of, uh, disk drive, a printer, a CPU. CPU is the central processing unit. The CPU has, um, the, CPU, the CPU of, uh, of a PC, a PC means personal computer, has a motherboard with several chips mounted on a, on a circuit board. So when we look at hardware, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be able to display, or I'll, I'll be able to display what a motherboard is. So the major components of a, uh, the major components of, of the circuit board are microprocessor, the RAM, ROM chip, and other supporting circuits. So which is the, the micro? So the microprocessor chip is like a brain of a human being, which contains circuits and registers to perform arithmetic, logic, and control functions. It contains the ALU. ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit. Somebody else, this guy, Daniel. We are going to say Daniel something. Huawei mate, kindly stop sharing your screen. You are giving me hell here. You are sharing your screen to everybody. Kindly stop sharing your screen. Let me, let, let me be the only one sharing the screen. So as we had said that uh, the microchip, is like the brain of a, the human being, which contains circuits and registers to perform arithmetic. Sorry, who is this sharing? HP, kindly. So let's go back again. I want, we are almost through, so relax. So the microchip is like a brain of the human being, which contains circuits and registers to perform arithmetic logic and control function. I.e. it contains the ALU. ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit, and the C is the control unit. So this chip will be able to retrieve data from the input output devices, store, manipulate, and process a byte of data at a time. There is an address bus which is built into these chips to determine the storage location of the RAM, of course, of the data and the instruction of the program. Over the years, different microprocessors were developed, and the first in the series is the Intel 8080. The other processors are the 8088, the 8286, the 8386, the 8486, Pentium 1 to Pentium 4. The Pentium 4 can execute any piece of code that run on the original 8080, but it does it uh, about 500 times faster. So as you note, there are different uh, types of processors that came into existence, and they have different clock speed. So the speeds are, have been improving from 8080, 8286, 8386. Now the processors have improved, and we are even doing uh, Core 2 Duo, there are so many processors. So we have these ones. These are older ones. But currently, we are doing very well with uh, the current generation. So these are just and the speeds, not these and not the speeds. So nowadays, we have uh, fully 64 bits with the uh, 64 bits bus, uh, with the number of computers doubling if 18 months based on the. So these things, Moon's Law. The, the multi-core computers are now the thing, are now the in thing. So right now we have the, the current computers actually the in thing, because right now we are doing with the 64 bit, uh, with the 64 bus. So 
actually we have really improved uh, if you look at the current computers we have really improved and we, we are doing we are doing very well so classification of computers based on the purpose so we have the general purpose computers based on purpose of general purpose and special purpose and dedicated general purpose they can do anything including a variety of jobs so they're just general purpose special purpose this is a computer specifically to perform specified tasks, e.g. weather forecasting and the gen uh, generation of, of, uh, of uh, the... So then... Uh, we have now the, we have talked about the three uh, uh, computers based on purpose. The three we have general purpose, special purpose, and dedicated computer. So the special purpose these are computers specifically to perform specialized tasks, each weather forecasting, and the generation of of weather maps. Then we have the dedicated. These are computers, even though they are they can perform various tasks, they are dedicated to specific application like uh, web processing. So we have an activity here and uh, try to carry it out. But uh, I'll ask you a few questions. Which of the following types of computer is commonly used in the offices? So kindly give your answers on the, on, on the, on, on the you can answer that. What, what are the computers mostly used in the offices? Can you give me answers for that? On your chat. On your chat, kindly give me the answers. On your chat, kindly give me your answers. I can see laptops, microcomputer. Uh, and if you look at now, when those who are saying it's mainframe uh, and mini computers, uh, look at the sizes. Uh, but I can see most of them are saying personal computers, laptops, and microcomputers. Mostly what we use in our offices, based on the answers we have, based on the question, we have options. We had supercomputer, mainframe, mini computers, and microcomputers. So which one? Choose these answers. Don't go outside those answers. Because we have option A. We have option A, supercomputers, mainframe, mini computers, and micro. So choose one. Desktop is not part of the options, kindly. So choose one among the following. The question was, uh, which of the following types of computers is commonly used in offices? We have A, microcomputers, B, mainframe, C, mini computers, and D, microcomputers. Huh? Uh, sorry. They can't, you can't see my screen. Let me share what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, which one of the following types of computers commonly used in offices. Option A, supercomputers. Option B, mainframe. Option C, mini. And D is micro. So which one? Choose one and type it on the... So the question was, which one of the following types of microcomputers is commonly used in offices, supercomputer, mainframe, min, and mini computers, or micro? So choose one. And the answer, before I, I give the answer, I want to see what you're typing here. Let me see what you're typing here. Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm just seeing what you're typing. And um, I can see. So the answer there is microcomputers mostly are the ones used in, in, in offices. So the answer is microcomputers. Next, computers ha have continued to decrease in size, but the processing power has increased. Is it true or false? Can you write your answer in the chat? Is it true or false? In the chat, the question is, computers have, been, have continued to decrease in size, but their processing power has increased. Is it true or false? 
Can you type if it's true or it's false? Eh? Type if it's true or false. Just jogging your memory so that you can get this thing very fast. Yes? Is it true or false? Based on what we've learned today, is it true or false? I can see, you know, don't, don't, you don't need to talk, just, uh, just type. I'll not allow you because you are too many. If I allow talking, everybody will talk. So kindly just share your answers. Share your answers based on what we've last looked at. Just share your answers. I'm looking at your answers. So let me share again your screen, my screen. So, of course, the question was, so computers are, and this one, I'll just remind you, if I go back to the notes, uh, if I go back to the notes, let me share your, my screen. If I go back to the notes, um, we want to see if it's true or false. Now, the notes, if we go back to the notes, You will note that uh, at the top here, we said research shows that the trend in computer technology, uh, just a minute, I, I see you cannot see my screen, so let me share, share. So, Following that question, research shows that the trend in computer technology revolution is that there is continual decrease in computer size, improved speed and power processing, decrease in computers and the related uh, facilities cost. So that for that particular question, the answer is true. So it is true based on our notes and what we've gone through. It is it is true. Actually, it is it is very true. Those who are sharing the screen like Vincent, kindly stop sharing your screen on your phone. Vincent, you are giving me a lot of hell here. So computers have continued to decrease in size, but the processing power has increased. That is very true. So we are, we are now going to look at uh, the characteristics of computers. Computers have characteristics. This is one of the objectives we set out to do in this particular course. Although they are machines, computers show a variety of characteristics that give them a, com a, compute, a competitive age compared to the humans. So these include the speed. A computer is a, a very fast machine. It can perform in, a ve in, in very few seconds the amount of work that a human being can do in a year if he or she worked day and night uh, doing nothing else. Then we have accuracy. The, the computer accuracy is consistently high. Then we have uh, diligence. Sorry, I haven't shared my screen. Some, somebody with Samsung, this EDA 0379, kindly stop sharing your screen. Kindly stop sharing your screen. You, you are causing issues. So we have diligence. So we have said characteristics, we started with speed, accuracy, then we go to diligence. Computers are free from monotony, tiredness, and lack of concentration. It can therefore work for hours without creating an error. For example, if 10 million calculations are to be done, uh, a computer will do to the 10th million calculation with exactly the same speed and accuracy as the first one. So then we have versatility. A computer is versatile. A computer performs various tasks with ease. It can search for a letter, the next moment prepare an electricity bill and write a, a report next, then do an arithmetic all with ease. Then the power of remembering, computer can store and recall any information due to its secondary storage capabilities. The other thing is that it has no IQ, no intelligent quotient. A computer cannot make its own decision and has to be instructed on what to do. Then it has no feelings. I know my feelings, it has no feelings. So computers are devoid of emotions. They have no feelings or instincts and none, uh, none possesses the equivalent of human heart and souls. 
So, for example, I'm now giving you an answer in your own words, in your own understanding. How are computers different from humans? So kindly, this one just do it your own exercise. You can do it at home. So very fast in this particular area, everybody has to write the application areas of computers. Kindly write in your in in in, in your chat box, uh, in the message box. Write the application areas of computers. Kindly write and why you think that area is applied. We'll just see them. We'll just view as we view them. So kindly write, uh, write for us in, uh, in the chat message where computers are applied and the reason why you think they are applied there and where. Can you type in your chat box? In your chat, hospitals, and say, if it's hospitals, I can see Moses Bayer, you're saying it's hospitals. How? Where? In the supermarket, how? The question is how? Uh, if uh, we have a Kai used in hospitals, how? Can you explain? How are they used in hospitals? You are saying in calculations. Now, where I've said areas where they applied. Now, when you say in calculations, check. So in schools for teaching students, in offices for sending mails, give the reason where, how in hospitals again, why? Continue, continue typing as, uh, as, I, as, as we have them in banking for counting money. I can see, like, uh, uh, yeah, type in so fast. Bank for records in airports to check uh, plane safety in cybers. How in schools, in offices, in banks? How now explain? Try to explain your answer. Kindly explain your answers. I can see you are you, explain your answers. Explain your answers in schools. For keeping records, financial decision for correct calculation. So keep typing, just a few minutes. I can see them on the screen. Used in industries, I can see the industries and it's well explained. Businesses, computers that can be used in the businesses. Academic office, uh, banking halls, uh, in schools. Yeah. Keep, keep typing them, let them come up. Keep typing. In the mess, how are they used in the mess? Now you've just said that they are used in the mess, but how? How are they used in the mess? Kindly don't repeat what somebody else has typed. Give us a new, give us a new one. So I can see, let me share my screen so that you can see some of the answers you're giving. Security purposes in homes, in IBC for counting votes. You can see in companies, in government institutions. Yeah, that is it. So let, let's move. So I'll, I'll just pass through. I can see you have an idea of where they apply. So computers are usually business. So computer characteristics are high, uh, the computer characteristics are as high speed, calculation, diligence, accuracy, reliability, has made it an integrated part in all business organization. So computer is used in business organization for payroll calculation, budgeting, sales analysis, budgeting sales analysis, financial forecasting, managing employees, database, uh, maintainers of stock. Then in banking, uh, not just limited to this, but in other areas, but I'll just say that Today, banking is, all, is almost totally dependent on computer. Banks provide following facilities, bank online account facilities, which include current balances, deposit, overdraft, ATMs are also using that. Then we have the insurances and how they are using insurance. We have in education, like right now you are running through L, uh, online because of Zoom and uh, the rest. So it's also important. So the computers have provided also facilities in the education system. The use of computers provide a tool in the education system so uh, known as the CBC, Computer Based Education, the CB, 
Education involves control, delivery, and evaluation of learning. So, like we are going to use computers to do exams, cuts. So, note that cuts we will do them. Then the computer education is very familiar and rapidly increasing the graphic, uh, the graph of computer students. There are a number of methods in which, sorry, I'm not sharing my. Wanyoni, Lilian Wanyoni, kindly stop sharing your screen. So, as we said in the military, they are used for missile control again, military communication, military operation and planning, smart uh, weapon communication. So, communication means to convey a message, an idea. Is this again sharing? Karen Bryan. What's your name, Mamboyakoi? Stop sharing your screen. So we have the smart weapon communication. So communication means to convey a message, an idea, a picture, or a speech that is received and understood clearly and correctly by the person for whom it is meant. So some main areas in this category are email chatting, Usenet uh, file transfer protocol. This FTP means file transfer protocol, then tel, uh, telnet then video conferencing. So government, computers playing an important role in government application. Uh, some of the air, uh, major fields in this category are budgets. So what are the advantages of computer? This is another area we have to look at. So advantages of using a computer. The problem, I've said you stop sharing. Will you, Brian, what's wrong with you? I said stop sharing your screen. You are interfering with my presentation. When you share your screen, I stop sharing. So kindly. The advantages of using computers uh, in, uh, in business application process tasks at a high speed, therefore quick. What could be the advantages now that you want to share your screen and you are interfering? Kindly give me the advantages of computers. Kindly type the advantages of computers. What are the advantages of computers? Type the advantages and disadvantages on your chat books. Kindly type the advantages and disadvantages of your computer, computers. Advantages, merits and demerits of computers. What are the merits and demerits? Kindly type the merits and demerits of computers. I can see some are saying accurate. They kindly explain, explain. Stop sharing your screen. Stop sharing your screen. Unaona mwingine ana share. Andrew Abuile. What are you doing again? Merits, I want to see the demerits. I can see the merits are moving. I can see very fast. If I go back, I can see some of you. Uh, they are really typing. They have no feeling. So it is an advantage or a disadvantage. You didn't state. Tell me if it's a merit and demerit. Just say it's an advantage or it's a disadvantage. So you state if it's a merit or demerit. Don't just keep, keep typing. Keep right. I can see Wanyama. Uh, see, they're accurate. That's an advantage. Keep typing. Mayo, I can see you. Alfred, I can see your answer. Uh, jo Joshua, I can see you. Keep typing. Keep them moving. Keep typing. Keep typing. The merits and demerits. I can see you're typing demerits and merits. Demerits and merits. Keep typing. Keep typing. 
Because network errors as a disadvantage. Job vacancy reduces people will go home. Can see somebody say that uh, computers will make people not have jobs? I can see it saves time, a demerit, requires highly skilled people, less expensive, only applied by the literate. The high. So keep typing. So as you keep typing, of course, advantages of a computerization in any organization is handling errors easily, easy storage and retrieval information, increased efficiency, high quality of work, reducing costs, faster processing of information, sharing of information, increased accuracy, improved moral of workers, uh, that is reliability, quick access and retrieval of information. The disadvantages, it has no intelligence quotient in iq so a computer is a machine and has no intelligence of its own to perform any task dependency it can perform functions as instructed by the user so it is fully dependent on the human being then environment the operating environment of a computer should be dust free and uh, suitable to it it has no feelings mm, so that is uh, very important. Give, can you kindly give me reasons why people re resist using computers? What? Kindly type, why, why do people resist using computers? Why do people resist using computers? What's the reason? What could be the reasons why people don't want to use computers? The reasons why, what could be the reasons? Can you type the reasons? Reasons why people may resist the introduction of computers at their workplace. What are the reasons why people might resist the use of computers? Some they are talking about health problem, ex expensive environment. Uh, kindly explain your answer. And you're all right, I can see, yeah. Requires qualified personnel. So people, if they don't have skills, actually they might resist. What else? Keep, keep typing, keep typing. Uh, laws of control and fear. I can see one of you typing that. I keep typing, I can see they are coming in very fast. Keep typing, keep typing. Keep typing. So, I see most of you are very right, and I'll just pass through this so that you can get to know. So the reasons why people may resist the introduction of computers at their workplace are computers may lead to lack of jobs, computers require skilled manpower, computers have adverse effect on their health, fear of change, fear of failure, lack of understanding, and loss of control. And most of your answers I've, I've looked through, so just okay. So in this, in summary, in this topic, we have learned that a computer is an electronic device that converts data into information. In defining the computer, we related it to data, information, and programs. And the program, we went further and looked at uh, the evolution of computers. We were also able to classify the computers before exploring the characteristics of computers as well as the application in daily lives. So we endeavor now next time we will look at in topic two, we'll discuss the basic computer hardware. That is the physical tangible parts of the computer. We will also look at each, at each group of computer hardware available. For example, the input devices, output devices, processing devices, and storage devices. Uh, so before you go to topic two, let us look at how you, you have understood topic one. So kindly, in the, the first question, kindly type the answers if you can in your chat box. Kindly type your answers. These are self-check. Can you define what a computer is in your chat box? Can you define what a computer is? So in your self-check box, can you define what a computer is? What are the characteristics of a computer? Can you type that in your chat box? 
can you the various major advancement in computing since 1946 to present what are the advancements in terms of technology so from 1946 where we started with the vacuum tubes we came to the transistors we came to the ICs so what can you say we came to the very large scale integrated circuits then we have the UL cell ultra large scale integrated circuit so look at that then using size as a characteristic explain the various characteristics of machines under this classification so computers are classified according to size so what are the computers under this so kindly look at that sorry again somebody is sharing stop sharing the screen you are interfering with my presentation when i say don't share the screen kindly don't share and i think i'll i'll get macd to to to, to, to relaunch you so that you don't you stop sharing screen every time uh, i think some mcdonald will will do that so that next time you will be better so if you can answer all these and uh, you can see i've given the marks if you can answer all these then excellent if you can hardly answer one of these questions then you go back to the to, through this topic again go back through the topic i'll be attaching i'll be attaching the videos in your lms so if you miss the class you will go to the lms under resources of topic one and you will get the entire the entire video of what we have done you can also follow it through the youtube uh, youtube channel of it's already online you, I will share the link for the YouTube channel so that at the end of the day, you can, you, can, you can go and do a recap so that you can actually score between 25 and 30. So go through these questions. If you can't answer them, then go back and read first. Go back uh, through the topic again. Then listen to the videos we have gone through today uh, from your LMS system. How do you get these notes? These notes, you go to the LMS under resources. Uh, you get... Under my resources, under KUC 112, you will get this past lecture notes. So for further reading, the same introduction to computers is, 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 is one of the books that can help you in that part. Our learning outcomes, you have now completed topic one. The learning outcomes are listed below. So you can decide now and see if you can ask yourself this question. I can now explain what a computer is. And those are the questions I've asked you. I can now discuss the history of computers to death. Can I identify the different categories of computers? I can now classify computers according to their known classification. I can discuss the application of computers in daily life. So if you can answer all these questions, then in a nutshell, it means that uh, you, are, you are way ready for topic two, which is next week, the same time on Monday. We are meeting at the same time. So, I think the issue of sharing is becoming an issue every time you are making me not to share the screen. So what I'm sharing, I've just said uh, the learning outcomes. So these are the learning outcomes and you ask yourself these questions. So you ask yourself if they are okay, if you are sure of it, then proceed to topic two. Topic two has not been uploaded, but will be uploaded on the LMS by Monday. It will be on uh, Monday next week. It will be on and we will deal with it. So if you are checked and you're not sure about this column, so if you check this, that I, you cannot define what a computer is, you, can, you cannot discuss the history, you cannot identify the different characteristics of a computer, you cannot classify computers according to their known classification, and you cannot discuss the application of computers in daily lives. Then what we advise is that, that if you're not sure of, of the checks or not sure, then please go back and study that section in the topic before proceeding. So if you are sure, LMS is the learning management system, the e-learning system. LMS is the learning management system. And uh, it's the e-learning system, the one that you are taught on how to log in using your email, uh, email that uh, your Kibabi email and, uh, and, you, and, and, and your password. So you log in, then go and look for KUC, enter into KUC and uh, you will see.
I, in a moment, I'm going to log in. I'm going to try to log in and see if uh, I can show that. If you are sure, then you are ready for the next topic. So you will congratulate yourself and you can now wait for the next topic. And that is the end of my presentation. For those who came late, I'm, 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 I'm Mr. Peter Wawira Barasa. I'll be taking you through this course in the next 12 weeks. So you are all welcome. Have a nice week and uh, keep learning, keep learning. If you missed out anything, go back to go back to the LMS because at the end of the day, we have achieved all the objectives we wanted to achieve uh, at the beginning, where we have looked at the introduction of computer, the definition of terms, evolution of computer, the classification of computer, the characteristics of computers, application of computers, advantages and disadvantages of computers. So we have actually achieved our objectives as I, I can just reiterate that we have achieved our objectives by defining what a computer is, explaining the evolution of computing technology and the technological advancements in computer architecture, current technologies. We have explained the characteristics of computers and we have also categorized computers based on size, price and capabilities. So having said that, that marks the end of uh, this particular session. But before I proceed, anybody with a question, you can type your question. You can type your question, maybe you can, you can have, you can type your question in the chat. You can type your question in the chat so that maybe we, we can address it. You can type your question on the chat. Anybody? LMS is it? The e-learning portal, okay. I saw that question, the issue on uh, how can I access the questions in the forum? Okay, there, there are questions that I, I, I'm, I'm going to put on forums where you can discuss, but partly is what we have, we have already discussed. So forums are very important, but for this topic one, we're not going to use for, we, 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 I'll add in forums so that where you can discuss questions at chat as peers in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in this particular course. So I'll add a forum, I'll add a forum uh, on, on, on your LMS so that you can be able to share. So if, um, any other question that I have? Any other, any other question you are saying? Can I, how can I access? You go to the e-learning portal and then go to, you will, you will first get the introduction of the course. Let me try to enter into the e-learning system so that you can see what I want. It's just a minute, e-learning. So let me try to log into the e-learning system. Let me try to log into the e-learning system.